Hey there, welcome back. Well, today we're gonna to have another look at a cool ESP Home project. This time we're gonna be flashing the Elcro Advanced 5.0 screen with some ESP Home code so that we can display some Home Assistant entities on the device. Just to give you the heads up, Elcro did send this panel to me free of charge, but this is not a sponsored video and they have no idea about what I'm gonna say. So bear in mind that there are two versions of this device. The one I'm showing you has got the case included, um, but it also comes in a version without the acrylic case like the one we're looking at here at the moment. So $32.90 is for the screen itself. And then you've got some add-ons that you can purchase. There are these four different wireless modules that can be added on over here. There's a LoRa module, a thread and Zigbee module, a Wi-Fi 6 module, and then an RF module. So those are available and can be plugged in if required. There are also some other add-ons that you can buy here. For example, you can buy these little crow tails, they call them. These are connectors that can allow you to connect either just temperature, humidity, or a more um, in-depth air quality sensor. So it's a five inch HMI display with 800 by 480 resolution and it has an IPS capacitive touch display. It also has Bluetooth 5.0 and it runs on an ESP32 S3 module. It can be used for smart AI functionality with the addition of a speaker which can be connected to the speaker board and it does include a microphone. So this device has been designed with a huge number of features. It's got one, two, three UART ports. It's got an I squared C port. It's got a buzzer. There's a USB-C five volt input, which is also used for flashing. We've got a real time clock battery as well, a speaker port and an SD card slot. Once you power the device up using a USB-C cable, you'll come and see it comes up with a splash screen and then it gives you some of the specifications. Then it comes up with this demonstration uh, image that it's got with a number of different tabs that you can tab through. As you can see, the touch screen is pretty sensitive and seems to give a great response. Elcro's wiki contains an ESP Home tutorial that is really useful for converting this over to an ESP home device. As you can see, the tutorial that they show offers connecting the sensor, the DHT22 and the LED directly via UART cables. Unfortunately, these were not supplied with my test device. So I'll show you how I've changed the program to pull in information directly from Home Assistant. First, you need to download these materials from the link provided. These are basically the icons for the screen. So we download these one by one, and then we load them up to ESP Home. In order to load them up, I use the file editor, select your folders and find ESP Home. And then what you need to do is upload the file using that little button, select it over there, select the file and open it. You can then upload it by pressing the OK key. Download the YAML code from this link over here. Select it here, download. Once it's downloaded, you need to extract the file, open it up, and here we have the YAML code. Now you can copy this code. Within Home Assistant, I'm assuming you've already installed ESP Home Builder. Click on it new device, new device setup. We'll call this Elcro screen. Next, we're going to skip this step because we're going to load the code first. This is really important. Ensure that you select the S3 chip type, skip the install. And now we're going to go in and edit our install. So take that code that you've copied and paste it in down at the bottom here. So now what you need to do is copy over your API code over here. The reason you've done this is it set this up for you within Home Assistant. You don't want to use the one that they've provided. So you paste that in over there. 
also select the OTA over here, paste that in and replace the one that they've offered and then check to see that you've make sure that you've got your Wi-Fi SSID and password saved as a secret. Now what you can do is go and delete all of that information over there. Next, plug your cable in from the Elcro screen into the computer running Home Assistant and select install. Select plugged into computer running ESP home device and then find the correct one. You can see here we've got the ZBT2 and the Sonoff dongle. The one we want is this one, the USB serial. As you can see, we've got the temperature and humidity not showing anything. And then we've got the light on the right hand side over there. Now, the reason it's not showing anything is because we don't have any sensors connected directly to it. So now what I'm going to do is show you how to paste some code into the YAML to allow it to pull this information from Home Assistant instead. So the first thing we're going to do is scroll down to the sensor component because that's where it's pulling the data from the device connected directly to it. So you can see here we've got the sensor, we've got the AHT10 um, sensor platform. So what we're going to go and do is I could remove it, but I'm just going to leave that existing code there. And what I'm going to do is just tab down. Um, now, just remember, you need to tab back to the platform level over there. And we're going to paste in there. We just make sure we just bring that back again. So just always make sure that your sensor and then platform, the platforms need to be in line like this. So as you can see here now, it's going to pull data from the platform home assistant. It's going to pull that data and call it HA underscore temp. And then it's going to pull that information from the identity ID in home assistant. So this is one of my temperature sensors in Home Assistant. So if we want to have a look at where I pulled that from, I went to Settings, Devices and Services, and I've got these two air gradient sensors running. And the inside one over here, I went to the temperature, I selected the little gear icon, and I copied that sensor ID from there. Next, we need to do the same thing with the humidity. And then what we want to do is we want to copy these IDs. So the HA temp ID, we're going to copy that and we're going to scroll down over here. You'll see this is where it's actually printing the information onto the screen. So currently it's called room temp, the ID, but I'm going to change the ID over here to be the one HA temp. And then we'll do the same thing with the humidity. Next, I wanted to alter the switch component. So you can see here the switch is currently switching the LED light on and off, which is connected to the device. So I'm going to change this based on what ChatGPT reckoned to a changing a light within Home Assistant. So you'll see here now we're doing the platform Home Assistant, ID HA light, and it's now switching the NCD ID, which is the bathroom light switch in my Home Assistant. Next, I saved and installed this new code. So as you can see, it's now pulling in the temperature as well as the humidity live from my home assistant and the light. What I found here is that the touch switch on the light doesn't seem to work. So you can see here when I turn the light on and off within home assistant, it changes the icon showing that it's turned on and off, but there doesn't seem to be any touch switch capability operating. So next, I tried pasting the full code into ChatGPT. I asked it to add a touch control to the button for the light. I copied the code for the touch platform and pasted it into my ESP Home. For some reason, it came with the problem, touch component not found. So this is the problem I was running into. So after a lot of digging around, I still wasn't able to get that touch button working. Now, I will leave you a link in the description below to a video from Vaklov where he manages to get the touch working on his screen. So it's definitely possible, but I'm a real beginner when it comes to coding. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please like and subscribe because I've got lots more ESP Home videos coming in the future. Bye for now.